Hi, I'm Mads Christensen, a program manager on the Visual Studio web team. In this video, I'm going to show you how Visual Studio 2017 makes it easier and more productive than ever to write web applications. There are many new features and improvements in Visual Studio 2017 for web developers, so I've picked a few that I'm particularly excited about. The brand new JavaScript editor supports all the latest ECMAScript standards and comes with a bunch of new productivity features. Linters helps us catch errors in JavaScript, TypeScript, and CSS code, and the Visual Studio debugger now supports both server and client-side code debugging directly in Google Chrome. Updates to BrowserLink makes all these new capabilities an integral part of our workflow to make us more productive than ever before. Let's dig in. Here I have a website that uses ASP.NET Core on the backend and static HTML, JavaScript, and CSS on the front end. I have an HTML file. I'm using the jQuery uh, JavaScript library, as well as two custom JavaScript files and a CSS file. And if we take a look at the HTML, we can see it's pretty simple. I have a header and I have an output, as well as script tags to include jQuery and my two custom JavaScript files. Here's what the website looks like in Google Chrome. Now let's take a look at the first JavaScript file. I have a simple function that adds two numbers and returns the result. I want to use this function to include the result uh, using jQuery onto my web page in the browser. And to do that, I'm going to go into my other JavaScript file. And I'm going to use jQuery now. And you see, as soon as I open uh, the brace here to use jQuery, I get full IntelliSense. Visual Studio was able to recognize that I was using jQuery in my project and automatically hooked it up with um, the TypeScript definition files for jQuery that gives me very, very advanced and accurate IntelliSense. So now I can write my function and I'm now going to call the add function. And we see here it shows up in IntelliSense. And that's because Visual Studio now will give me IntelliSense for everything that I've defined in any JavaScript files in my project. I no longer have to make reference, references from one file to another to get the IntelliSense. It just happens automatically. And I'm going to give this two parameters, one and a two. This add function, if we take a look at it, doesn't really give me much information about what it expects in, my, in the parameters I give it, as well as what type it returns. And we can see that by invoking IntelliSense here, where Visual Studio is not really able to determine what's being returned by the add function here. So the IntelliSense uh, reflects that. I can now, if I go to the add function, I can now annotate it using js.comments. And Visual Studio will automatically scaffold for me uh, the js.comments, um, like this. And I can add a description. I can also specify what the types of these two parameters are. So I'm going to specify that they are numbers. And I can give them a description. And this is actually enough for Visual Studio to know what the return type of the add function is based on uh, that it now knows that the two input parameters are both numbers. But I can be very specific and tell Visual Studio by using, uh, by specifying returns here. And of course, I get IntelliSense for that as well. Give it a description. And now, if I go back to my site.js file, I can now see IntelliSense has been uh, greatly improved by the JS doc comment that I added. I can now see that the parameters take uh, are, are numbers, the two parameters, 
Um, and the return type is also a number. I even get the description of the add function itself as well as the description for each of the parameters. And now IntelliSense gives me the accurate um, list of uh, objects on a number here and functions to call. So that is very nice and I can now start coding to add the calculated number here to my page. And I'm just going to create a conditional like this. And now I'm going to use jQuery to find my output element. And I'm just going to append the result here like that. Now I'm going to save the file. And if we look in the error list, we can now see that I got a couple of errors showing up. These are errors that are coming in through the linters. And in this case for JavaScript, Visual Studio runs ESLint in the background to help me catch uh, common mistakes um, and make it easy for me to fix them. So I'm just going to fix these two errors right here and save the file again. Now ESLint runs yet again and it finds no errors this time. So that's very nice. Now for me to, to, for me to see this uh, code running in the browser, I'm going to use browser link and I'm going to hit control alt enter in Visual Studio to reload the browser. And we can see now it's reloaded very, very quickly. And I see the output on my page. Let's say I want to dig in a little deeper and see what's going on. I can now set a breakpoint and hit control alt enter again to reload the browser. And the breakpoint now hits. And I can inspect everything just like you would expect from uh, the Visual Studio debugger here. Everything that you're used to is live for JavaScript debugging, including the watch window. So I can say here that I want to look for the i variable. I'm going to change its value to 10, actually, and just continue running. And we can see the output in the browser is now 10. So I can very quickly write JavaScript and annotate it with js.comments to help other people on my team to know how to call my functions, uh, catch common errors very quickly, and debug easily. And with browser link, I make the reload of the browsers uh, a very, very easy and very productive thing. Thank you very much.